about the video earlier. Very interesting, right? The video is entitled Pendekar Silat Melayu. So as you can see in the video earlier, there are children, men, women, and the senior citizens who are also practicing and performing the silat together. And some of them, if you notice, are also using weapons such as keris, lembing, sarong, and also parang. So without further ado, let's get started. Assalamualaikum to Dr. Amirul and friends. My name is Luciana Lu and my metric number is 271550. Today I'm going to present about the intangible heritage which is called the silat presentation i'll be explaining the background of the silat the domain of the silat concept connected to the silat and also my opinions regarding the safeguarding of the silat to kickstart intangible heritage or ich means the practices expression knowledge skills that communities groups and sometimes individuals considered and recognized as part of their cultural heritage. Additionally, the UNESCO had identified five key elements which includes the oral traditions, performing arts, social practices, knowledges, and practices that emphasize the universals and the craft skills. Malaysia is actually very rich in intangible heritage. According to the UNESCO website itself, Malaysia have six intangible heritage which includes the Pantun, Wang Chuan Ceremony, Songket, Silat, Dongdang Sayang, and also Ma Yong Theater. Now, are you ready for the main topic? I am actually very interested in martial arts since my young age and until today. I have taken the Taekwondo and also Karate until university life. Hence, for this presentation, I am going to briefly explain my chosen intangible heritage, which is called Silat. And today, Silat is not only considered as a martial art or self-defense, but also as well as the performing Silat on the stage accompanied by the music and curries with Malay attire or black uniform. And lastly, it is also known as the Silat Olaraga or Sport Silat which the quality and technique is performed correctly with points earned in efficient manner on the stage. Silat has been recognized by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, on the representative list of intangible cultural heritage of humanity in 2019. Just like any other martial art, Silat is a wonderful art of self-defense or fights and survival practices that are rooted in Malay archipelago. In the early of Langkasungka kingdom era, Silat evolved into fine practice of physical and spiritual training, which will be worn with the traditional Malay attire. The typical male attire is including shirt, pants, shirt and pants, headgear, a sash, and a sampin back then. And today, the clothing for silat has transformed into a black uniform with a sash, headgear, and sampin. Black is considered as the shadow of the soul of practitioner. And do you know that the legend of Hang Tua is famous and admirable because of his silat skills in defeating in both lands and sea? And for your information, Silat is deeply entrenched in the tradition and culture of the Malay civilization, Malaysian civilization. And though Silat has also left its footprints of many other Asian countries such as Indonesia, Singapore, Brunei, Philippines, and Europe, America, and also Australia. Next, the domain of the Silat is categorized as performing arts, and also knowledge and practices concerning the nature and the universe. My observation shown that silat can be used to pass on knowledge, social values, and survival skills. Additionally, there are also many styles of silat inspired by the movement of human anatomy, nature, animal, which is very related to the knowledge and practice concerning nature and the universe. Silat has also indeed had a correlation between the art of self-defense and performing art. Silat involved in the ranking using belt systems starting from the white until the black belt. Every Silat topics measuring into seven different topics, which includes 
bunga, the flower, jurus, belebak, tapak, tempur seni, and tempur bela diri. And, and today, silat is not only considered as a martial art or self-defense, but also as well as the performing silat on the stage accompanied by the music and curries with Malay attire or black uniform. And lastly, it is also known as the silat olahraga or sport silat, which the quality and technique is performed correctly with points earned in efficient manner on the stage. Alright, now I'm going to explain the concept that are connected to the silat. Originally, silat was practiced by the warriors or pendekar as enforcers of justice. But nowadays, practitioners consisted of the master, guru, teachers, and also students who are responsible for maintaining the practice of silat. Razha Rashid stated that each silat has its own specific bunga sets, though some places are more emphasis on it than the other. So, the term bunga denotes the dance-like movement that are prevalent in many Malaysian silat style. A true pendekar will often have an artistic soul and cultivate interest in cultural field, such as kerils, metalwork, woodcraft, traditional dancing, Malay attire, medicine, and also music. More than just a collection of fighting technique, it was much more an integral part of the Malay culture as any other form of education and preparation for the young men for adulthood. Now, women can also practice silat and they are known as Sri Kandi. Because of this, there is a strong emphasis in this art on self-defense to complete the balance, mental and spiritual self-discipline based on the Islamic teachings is developed. As I mentioned earlier in the domain of silat, you might be wondering what has silat has to do in spiritually? So it can be said that the stronger you are, the more peaceful and the better you know how to gain freedom and maintain it. This is why the trainees is whipped into shape through several years of tough training. The rigorous and the back-breaking routine ensures the physical, resilience, stamina, and also agility. Other than what I mentioned earlier, which is the practice of the spiritual matters, a lot of researchers and also believers believe that it is the inheritance, intimate knowledge of the body structure and parts, veins and arteries, body movement, and even psychology are to use in the knowledge in perfecting the self-defense of silat. Now, before I end this video presentation, as a girl who loves martial art, I will honestly wish to learn silat one fine day. And I highly believe that it is crucial to preserve and safeguarding this silat, especially by the Malaysian. The re-recognition by the UNESCO has made it an effective way or realization for the Malaysian to actually join in silat and making it sure that it is inherited by generation to generation. However, the lack of exposure towards the younger generation has making it hard to be maintained. So, I believe that everything starts from the younger age. I believe that school, private institute, and university need to make sure silat is added into extra subject or curricular activity to boost the interest of the younger generation. Lastly, in my opinion, I think that private organizations, stakeholders, government, researchers, and especially the MOTEC should also play a role and promote to expose the beauty of Silat to the Malaysian. The marketing program classes can also be done and shared through the social medias, school, malls, and many more to influence everyone to participate in the Silat not only by the Malaysian, but also worldwidely. Book about Silat can also be produced and shared worldwidely. And I hope, and I hope, and last but not least, I also hope this video presentation can be inspiration for people who actually are interested in Silat. That's all. Thank you.